U.S. President Joe Biden has finally called it quits as the Democratic contestant. Vice President Kamala Harris has been named by Biden to lead the Democratic Party's ticket against Trump. The Vice President has expressed strong praise for Biden's extraordinary leadership and his dedicated service. Kamala Harris has already got endorsement from former President Bill Clinton and Hillary Clinton. According to a YouGov poll, 79 Democrat leaders are backing the 59-year-old Vice President. After Biden got out of the U.S. presidential race, Democrats have less than a month to get a new nominee. Though Biden has endorsed Vice President Kamala Harris, the official selection of a nominee will be made by more than 4,600 Democratic National Convention delegates. All eyes will now be on the DNC, which is all set to take place in Chicago next month. After U.S. President Joe Biden pulled out of his re-election bid, some Republicans called on the 81-year-old to resign from the presidency too. Republican presidential nominee Donald Trump and his running mate J.D. Vance are among the top voices calling for Biden's resignation. Meanwhile, Democrats called on Biden to withdraw from the 2024 race. None have pushed him to quit the presidency early. Following Biden's exit from the presidential race and his endorsement of Kamala Harris, a Trump versus Harris battle could be on the cards this November. A recent poll revealed that Trump has a 3% edge over Harris. Though she has the endorsement of Biden, Kamala Harris still has to win a contested convention next month. If nominated, then the 59-year-old will be the first non-white female to run for president. U.S. Secret Service Chief Kimberly Chettle is expected to testify at a congressional hearing today. Chettle will appear before the Republican lawmakers who have expressed anger over security lapses that allowed a 20-year-old gunman to fire multiple shots at Donald Trump's rally in Pittsburgh. The law enforcement agency says that she has no intention of stepping down. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has departed from Tel Aviv for a six-day trip to the U.S. Ahead of his departure, Tel Aviv announced that its delegation will return to talks and hostages and a ceasefire on Thursday. Even as the Prime Minister left, hundreds of demonstrators turned out at the airport, continuing their demand for a deal to secure release of the hostages and bring about a truce in the war. Netanyahu will meet U.S. President Joe Biden in Washington on Tuesday and also address the U.S. Congress for the fourth time. The Houthis in Yemen have promised a huge retaliation against Israel for the deadly strike on Hordeda port on Saturday. Hostilities have increased between the two sides, with Israel saying it shot down a missile launch from Yemen, while Houthi group claimed to have fired several missiles at the Israeli city of Eilat. The Israeli military said that its Arrow 3 missile defense system shot down the surface-to-surface -surface projectiles before it crossed the Israeli aerospace. The Houthi spokesperson described the strikes as open war. Soldiers in Ukraine have kicked off a tour to European cities to visit their compatriots. This comes as a measure to counter misinformation on the war against Russia. Ukraine's third assault brigade started their meet and greets in the Polish capital of Warsaw on Sunday. More than two years into the Russia-Ukraine war, Warsaw has been home to a vast number of Ukrainian refugees.
Indian Army has thwarted another terror attack in Jammu and Kashmir's Gunda village near Rajori district. Terrorists targeted the house of a village defense committee member at 3 a.m., which was repulsed. Security forces launched a massive operation to flush out the terrorist, which is the fourth such attack in July. Heavy gunfire has been reported from the encounter site since early morning. Indian Army in a statement said that an army that an army unit nearby promptly responded to the provocation. The Indian Parliament's monsoon session is currently underway. Fireworks are expected between the ruling ND alliance on the neat paper leak row and other issues. The finance minister will table the economic survey today to be followed by the union budget on, th on, on Tuesday. It will be the first budget under the Prime Minister Modi-led coalition NDA government and it is expected to focus on defence, agriculture and social welfare issues. The session comprising 19 sittings will last until August 12th. With elections around the corner in Venezuela, leader of opposition Maria Cornia Machado, presidential contestant Edmundo Gonzalez and supporters offered prayers for a victory. Well, the gathering took place on Sunday in the country's capital city, Caracas. Supporters dressed in white were chanting and praying, holding candles. Venezuela's opposition has vehemently criticized arrest and other moves that they claim are meant to harm its election campaign. However, the government denies the allegations. The Indian Space Research Organization conducted a test on a new technology. The new technology is a scramjet engine which can fly more than five times the speed of sound. Interestingly, the vehicle uses atmospheric oxygen as fuel and this comes on a part of ISRO to manufacture cost-effective aerospace vehicles. South Korea will set up anti-Pyongyang loudspeaker broadcast in response to more balloons filled with trash coming in from the north. Seoul has also suspended a military agreement that was aimed at reducing tensions with Pyongyang. South Korea's Joint Chiefs of Staff have called the trash balloons vulgar and shameful. The two nations are engaged in a tit-for-tat campaign with North Korea selling about 200 trash-filled balloons since the month of May. Over 400 Nepali students have safely returned home from violence hit Bangladesh. Out of the 420 odd students, 305 entered Nepal from the Indo Nepal border point. Meanwhile, India's border security forces helped 500 Nepali students in crossing into India from Bangladesh. So far, a total of 1,200 Nepalese have arrived in Nepal. According to Nepali officials, more than 3,500 Nepali students are in Bangladesh. Nepal's foreign ministry has ensured the safety and security of Nepali students in Bangladesh. The appointment of Nepal's Prime Minister K.P. Sharma Oli has changed rather challenged in a writ petition. Oli was appointed by the Nepali President Ram Chandra Podul under Article 76 of the Constitution last Sunday. The petitioners have argued that Oli's appointment should have fallen under Article 76 of the Constitution. Prime Minister Oli had secured two-third majority in the floor test. First hearing in the case was held on July 21st. Twelve Indian rescue workers have joined the Nepali security forces in a search operation for several missing passengers. 
The team, which includes four drivers, arrived with equipment, including three sonar cameras. This comes after two buses were washed away by a landslide into a river in Nepal last week. Well, Indian and Nepal authorities have been searching bus wreckages for the passengers since the day of the accident. However, the search operation has not yielded the best of results. City of Mumbai was lashed by heavy rains for the second consecutive day. Parts of the city recorded up to 34 mm of rainfall in just one hour, affecting the local train services during rush hour. In the last 24 hours, the city has received an average of 135 mm rainfall. The Med Department has issued an orange alert for July 23rd. Three teams of the NDRF have been deployed in Mumbai and its suburbs amid the forecast of heavy rains and high tide. Devotees take a holy dip in the, in the Ganga across India to mark the occasion of Savan month. The first day of Savan is celebrated with prayers and rituals dedicated to the Hindu god Lord Shiva. This includes offerings at temples and holy dips in rivers. As the summer kick into top gear, the markets already have a lot on their plates and earning season is in full swing, as well as the Federal Reserve's rate path to consider. The next presidential election in 2024, however, that continues to dominate news headlines. Joe Biden said on Sunday that he will not be seeking re-election and backed Vice President Kamala Harris to be the Democratic contestant for the party. Experts say his decision, made with less than four months to go before the November polls, would cause market fluctuations and embolden Donald Trump's campaign as his strategy over the past few months were based on Biden's gaffes and inability to compete with the former president's speeches. In response to a historic drop in property prices, the Chinese Community Communist Party has promised to speed up the adoption of a new housing model that places an emphasis on renting and increases the number of affordable homes. State news agency said on Sunday that the party's central committee had issued a resolution stating that the new model will encourage both renting and buying and it will continue its call from 2017. The twice-a-decade event, known as the third plenum, is one of the most important in China's calendar, often determining the direction of economic policy going forward. Well, during this year's meeting, President Xi Jinping revealed comprehensive measures to help local governments that are in debt. As a further measure to bolster economic growth in the wake of the People's Bank of China's rate cut, Chinese banks lowered their key benchmark lending rate for the first time since August 2023. The prime rate for one-year loans was cut from 3.45% to 3.35% in a statement released on Monday by the PBOC. A benchmark for mortgages, the five-year rate fell from 3.95% to 3.85 percent. Well, these steps can, after the PBOC decided earlier Monday to lower a key short term. As further evidence of cooling inflation and economic activity emerges this week, the path towards an interest rate drop by the F Federal Reserve will become clearer. Economists anticipate a 0.1% increase in personal consumption expenditures, price index ex excluding food and energy for the second consecutive month in June. The report is scheduled to release on Friday. If that happens, core inflation over the past three months has slowed to a crawl, well below the Federal Reserve's 2% objective. 
Monthly inflation data along with spending and income readings will be released after the government publishes its first estimate of GDP for the June quarter. Andrew Bailey, Governor of the Bank of England, has remained silent for two months, leaving everyone to speculate about when a pivotal rate adjustment will take place. The head of the UK Central Bank will have been has rather been silent for over a month before the next decision. That is the longest stretch of silence he has experienced in more than four years as the Governor, with the exception of a brief comment following the June rate meeting. The experts point out that he and other swing voters on the Monetary Policy Committee may have chosen to speak out. Since then, the fundamental cause is a blackout period during Britain's six-week election campaign. Crypto platform Vazirex that lost $234 million in a cyber attack has announced a $23 million bounty to help recover the stolen funds. The company has invited white hat hackers, blockchain forensics experts and cybersecurity professionals globally to join the recovery effort. The amount offered by the company is one of the largest bounties ever offered in the crypto industry. The bounty program will remain open for three months. As per Microsoft, the global outage caused by CrowdStrike that created chaos on industries from airline to broadcasting affected nearly 8.5 million devices. The outage that took place on Friday impacted less than 1% of all window machines worldwide. The tech outage was caused by a CrowdStrike software update that triggered system problems that grounded flights, disrupted broadcasts and cut off access to services like healthcare and banking. A ransomware attack has shut down the computer system of the Superior Court of Los Angeles County. As per officials, the attack took place on Friday and was not related to the faulty CrowdStrike software update that affected airlines. Not just airlines, it also affected hospitals and banks worldwide. Upon discovering the attack, the court disabled its computer network systems and kept them shut over the weekend. As per officials, the court system will be shut on Monday as well. An initial investigation has shown no evidence that users' data has been compromised. The Indian government has asked tech giants like Google and Meta to come up with different ways to verify the age of children on their platforms. As per reports, the government has advised the platforms to explore their own tech-enabled methods to comply with the Digital Personal Data Protection Act. Previously, the IT ministry considered using Aadhaar or DigiLockers for age verification of users, but the method were found to be unfeasible.